Esther chapter number 2. I'm going to skip through this chapter. Of course, you know in, the chap- in Esther chapter 1, the, uh, there's a big, big party going on. They're having a big time. And, and, uh, and then you'll know that the, he sends for the queen, and the queen refuses to come. And Viasti, he puts her off of the throne. You know all of that. And then in chapter 2, he comes, and he's, uh, the, the kingdom has no throne, or uh, the kingdom has no queen. And so they begin to, the men begin to think about it. And he said, call all the young maidens together and we'll, uh, we'll uh, let each one come before you and you can pick out your another queen. And uh, of course that pleased the king. And uh, so chapter 2 is, is in the matter of that. He's, all these young maiden virtuous girls is coming before the king one by one. They come in more of the evening, go out the next day. And he gets to please uh, choose him a, a queen. And of course, we know uh, he chooses Esther to be the queen. And when the chapter two ends, Esther is the new queen uh, of the kingdom. We'll pick up reading verse number nine. It says, and the maiden pleased him. Well, let's back up to verse number eight. So it came to pass when the king command commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together in Shushan the palace to the custody of uh, he, he gag, or however you say that, that Esther was brought also before the king's house, the custody of he gag, king of the women. And the maiden pleased him. She obtained favor, kindness of him, and he speedily gave her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to give her out of the house, king's house. And he preferred her and her maidens under the best place of the house of the women. He's talking about Esther. In verse 10, Esther had not showed her people nor kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai uh, walked every day before the court of women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. And when every maiden's turn was come to go into the king, uh, Ahazer, uh, after that she had been 12 months according to the manner of women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil and mirth, and six months with sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying of the, of the, of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given to her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the morning, or in the evening, she went and in the, out of she went, and on the morrow she returned to the second house of the women, out of the custody of uh, uh, whoever that is, uh, <laughs> the king's chamberman, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she was called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the king, uh, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing. But what Hegek the king chamberman, the king of the women, appointed. For Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. And Esther was taken unto the king's, uh, unto his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Viasta. As far as I'll read, uh, I want to preach this morning on finding favor with God. Finding favor with God. Several times it mentions here in this chapter, verse 9, it talks about uh, Hagag the keeper has uh, found kindness, kindness of him. Uh, it talks about here in verse number 15, she obtained uh, favor in all them uh, that looked upon her. In verse 17, it talks about the king. She found grace and favor in his sight. Yeah. Finding favor with God. The word favor just simply means kind regard. Or it means kindness or kindness granted. It means support, defense, vindication, to afford advantage for uh, uh, for. Uh, someone. In other words, she found kindness uh, in from the king. She found favor with the king. I don't know about you, but if there's anything I want, I want to find favor with God. Amen. I'm not here to please man. I'm, uh, there has been a day that we please men, 
But uh, I, I want to find favor with God. Uh, I thought about that word favor is mentioned several times in the Bible. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, verse 18, verse 22, it said, Whosoever findeth a good, uh, findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And so findeth favor with God. Uh, it talks about in Jesus in Luke 22, he found favor. He groaned in statue and found favor with God. Uh, in Luke, eight, uh, Luke chapter 1, you remember Mary. Uh, they came to her and said, Thou art highly favored, highly favored with the Lord. In Genesis chapter number 39, it talks about Joseph. He found favor, found favor with the prison keeper. Uh, and on and on in Psalms, it talks about God fa uh, uh, found favor toward his people. And so uh, there's favor that comes in our direction. That means kindness of God, attention from God. A uh, uh, bestowing of God upon our hearts and our life, and I, and I don't know. And I said this again a while ago, but I want to find favor with the Lord in my life. I, I, I want God's attention. I want His kindness in my direction because I know without Him I can do nothing. Right. Amen. Right. Without Him, my my words is sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Right. Without Him. Uh, my words is just dead letters. Without him, there'll be no movement of God in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, we have to have the favor of God in our direction. And uh, I read a book the other day. I've been reading a lot of books about revival and things, and I've always been a revivalist. But uh, I was thinking about this, and I read a book the other day, and the, and the writer, the old writer, he said, he said, you know, we're always talking, we're always talking about revival, and we're always talking about uh, we want revival, and we need revival. Revival and let's pray for revival. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But he said we're asking God. What we're asking God to show up and do something in a great, a special way. But he said I'm going to tell you before you can have ever have revival. He said you're going to have to some confession of your own life and your own sin to get yourself and get favor with God in your life and in your direction. Amen. We want God to do something and us do nothing. Amen. Uh, but here uh, Esther, the Bible talks several several times. She she found favor with God. Now let me give you some ways to find favor with the Lord. First of all, I will say Esther, she prepared herself. She prepared herself to find favor with God. If she hadn't went through this process, if she hadn't went through all of this uh, six months in one and six months in the other, and went through all this process, if she just showed up before the king uh, and might have been expecting to find favor, uh, she probably wouldn't have found favor. That verse in the Bible where it said the king, she found favor in the king's sight, probably wouldn't be wrote in there, but she took the time to prepare herself. Uh, she went the time, took the time, the Bible said, and she was shut up for 12 months. 12 months. It wasn't just, a, she didn't just come up and show up in the kingdom and say, hey, let's let me go on to the king, uh, my friend. But she took time, 12 months, uh, uh, my friend. It took her to get to the place uh, that she could even go before the king. Uh, you know, I, we're looking for this instant help. We're looking for this instant work. Uh, we think we can just run down here, uh, uh, my friend, some Sunday morning and find favor with God, uh, I tell you, sometimes it takes a time. Uh, it's like courting. Sometimes it takes a while to get her attention, amen, uh, and uh, to find favor with each other. Uh, and my friend, uh, you, wouldn't wanna, you wouldn't want your kid, uh, uh, you Sydney back there, Brother Doug, you wouldn't want her to meet somebody today and marry tomorrow. Uh, uh, my friend, you'd want to know something about him, figure out a little th few things and find favor with each other. Uh, and my friend, listen, uh, we expect God just to come in here and uh, just show up and just run down here uh, and get a quick fix. I don't tell you, it don't work that way. Uh, it took time for her to prepare herself, uh, my friend, for this. Uh, and my friend, listen, not only that, I thought about this, not only the time it took, uh, but my friend, that uh, she she uh, didn't want anything. Uh, if you notice that, she required nothing uh, except uh, what the keeper, uh, the keeper of the, the women uh, provided. Uh, in other words, what he 
said. She could have said, well, I want to wear this. I want, I want this kind of perfume. I want to do this. And my friend, but you know what? I thought about this. That keeper, he knew. He knew what the king liked. He knew, my friend, what the king enjoyed. He knew what would get the king's attention. I'm going to tell you what, my friend. We're trying to dress ourselves up. I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost knows what God likes. The Holy Ghost knows what pleases God. My friend, we ought to desire nothing except what the Holy Ghost uh, wants in our hearts in our lives. Uh, there's a lot of things I think about, a lot of things I like to do to accomplish that, uh, but I'm more interested in what the Holy Ghost says. Uh, I'm more interested in what God wants. Uh, Brother Doug asked me to come up here and preach, and you know how it is. Uh, Brother Doug, immediately uh, my mind starts thinking, what am I going to preach? Uh, the first thing I thought, I preached everything I know up there, uh, and I think, man, what am I going to preach? That's the first thing when somebody calls me. Uh, what am I going to preach there? Uh, I can have six months out there, my mind's thinking, what am I going to preach uh, when I get there? Uh, and I had a thought. I thought, man, that's what I'll preach. Uh, got up here and last night, got back over to the motel. Uh, he's just like the Holy Ghost said, you can junk it. Uh, and my friend, he kept working and pulled me around to this. And I'm going to tell you, I, I want to please. I want to go over the king. Uh, I want to be dressed like he. Uh, I want to be uh, 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 smelling like he wants me to smell. Uh, and my friend, it takes time uh, and it takes preparation uh, to find favor with God. Amen. Note in that verse 12, uh, my friend, she says, uh, my friend, uh, that uh, now whatever maiden's turn came in, uh, 12 months, uh, 12 months it took her, uh, to my friend, to get even to the place she could even walk before and present herself uh, before the king. Uh, my friend, verse 15, it says that she did obtain uh, favor in the sight of all the people uh, as she came for him. And you know what? Sometimes uh, it takes it takes time uh, and we have to prepare Prepare ourselves uh, to, my friend, find favor with God. Yeah. You say, how you do that? Well, studying. Yeah, right, <laughs> studying right. to show ourselves approved of what? Yeah. A workman of God, a workman that, that needeth not be ashamed. Uh, it takes studying of the Word of God. It takes building ourselves up on the most holy faith. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I'll tell you what, if you're out of this Bible, you're not going to find no favor with God. Uh, my friend, you find favor through the words of God. God that, that spokes to our heart. Amen. Uh, you know it's like it's like dating somebody. Yeah, my friend, you can you can ask for somebody for well, well Christian back there. I don't know if he asked her, she asked him, one or the other. Uh, uh, my friend, but uh, uh, he can ask her. He asked her out about friend on a date, or maybe I don't know what happened. But we'll just say that if it didn't happen like this, Christian, don't worry about it. It's gonna happen anyway. Uh, uh, my friend, but uh, he he might have said, hey, hey, you gonna go uh, at college? He might have said, you know, you gonna have lunch together or something. Uh, they wouldn't have lunch together. Uh, they didn't know each other, uh, but you know what? They began, uh, my friend, to hang around more. Uh, they began to make different dates and different times, uh, and the more they hung around each other, the more they revealed themselves through their words. Uh, she began to talk, he began to talk, uh, they began to reveal themselves, uh, and the more they talked, the more they liked each other, uh, until they come to the place uh, that, my friend, I'm tired. It's like me and Kay. I got tired of taking her home. Uh, I said, man, I don't want to take her home no more. Uh, I want her to be with me uh, all the time and through those words we is drawn together and my friend listen we found favor with each other and I'll tell you what when you get this Bible and thank God God speaks to your heart and you get on your knees and pray and fellowship with God thank God there's a connection and my friend next thing you know you're finding favor with God and you want to be with him you want to please him I'm talking about finding favor with God you got to prepare yourself to find favor with God she talked and fellowshiped. My friend, listen, it's like an athlete. An athlete has to deny himself. A lot of stuff. It takes a lot of time. All these people that wins these gold medals, and they didn't get that overnight. They ain't none of them ever just got up one morning and said, Well, I'm going to go to the Nationals and I'm going to win. No, it took a lot of separation. It took a lot of denial. It took a lot of times that they wanted to do other things that they couldn't do. And my friend, they had the time here and they worked and they labored and they disciplined themselves until they got that gold medal and they found favor in their lives because they took time to get there. It takes time. It takes time to get there to find favor with God and prepare your heart. It's like cooking a meal. <laughs> it takes time to cook a meal. Amen. 
It takes time to prepare food. That's why we always just go and my friend get my friend that quick stuff. Amen. That we get that drive through that fast food stuff. That we say, well, I, I, I don't want to go all that preparation and everything. Just grab us a quick hamburger. Amen. Just order pizza. And my friend, we don't want to take the time to prepare a good meal. Amen. Say amen right there. Some of you don't know nothing about that, but say amen anyway. Amen. But it takes time to prepare a meal. Kale tell me, yes, you'll say, you need to go to the store. And what do you want for supper? And one of us will decide what we want. And she'll say, well, you're going to have to go to the store. And so you have to go to the store and get the stuff. And then she'll say, you're going to have to give me time to fix it. And my friend, she's in there in the kitchen. It takes time to fix it. It's not luck running up Sonic and grab a hamburger and come back and eat and you're over. My friend, it takes time to fix that meal. And it is so, ain't a good meal so much better, my friend, than a quick, quick fast food something. Amen. I got tired of that fast food stuff. So I told Kay, I said, man, we'll just cook. I, I don't like eating in the truck. We eat in the truck coming up here yesterday. I said, I'm over this. And my friend, I like sitting at the table. Amen. And my friend, but listen, my friend, it takes time to prepare and fix that thing. And my friend, that's why sometimes we won't do that because of the time it's involved. And I'm going to tell you what, it takes time to get yourself in shape, my friend, to find favor with God. It takes time to get yourself in shape just to worship God and find favor with the Lord and get God's kindness and God's attention in your direction. Good. Been reading about some old writers. I wrote some of them down last night. Uh, the Wesley brothers. Uh, how God moved them boys and used them boys. Uh, my friend, to, to, to move the country. Uh, I thought about that. Uh, my friend, uh, brother, uh, some of you won't know these. Uh, Evan Roberts and Spurgeon and, and Arthur Pearson and Sam Morris and Charles Finley, Ray, uh, uh, Percy Ray. Uh, and my friend, some of those great men that God used for revival. Uh, we think, man, what a great... But you know what? I begin to read about some of them fellas, Brother Doug, and that some of them, my friend, one guy said it took 12 years of praying and seeking God to get to that place that he was full of the Holy Ghost and found favor with God. He said some of them took two and three years praying and fasting and separating themselves from everything, my friend, for the revival to come. They didn't just get up one Sunday morning and walk in the pulpit and revival broke out. It took time to pray. One guy, one fellow he, I was reading about him. He found faith with God, praying, uh, fasted, and prayed for three days. Uh, had an appointment. Uh, had an appointment. One of the old Catholic meetings uh, said he had an appointment to coming up, uh, and said he fasted and prayed for three days, uh, laid before God, uh, preparing himself for that one service. Uh, and Mother Doug, uh, they said when he walked in the tabernacle, uh, he didn't say a word. He just walked in the tabernacle uh, and said, "People begin to weep. Uh, people begin to cry over the building." Uh, People begin to cry, oh God. People begin to cry out for salvation. People begin to cry out and weep and crawl into the altars. All the man did is just walk down the aisle. But he was so full of God. And God had so much favor on him. There was so much conviction before he ever opened his mouth. I don't know about you. I want favor with God. Let God move and work in my heart. And people will know and we'll see results from God. <laughs> Some of them guys, uh, my friend, it was amazing how they separated themselves. You know, we don't want to separate ourselves. <laughs> he talked about being mindful of God. You know, if you're going to be mindful of something, you, you've got to have that on your mind. He said mindful. He didn't just say passing through your mind every once in a while. <laughs> Amen. Me and Kay, I, I ran over and told her, I said, you know, that's the way you are. You were mindful in my heart, in my life. I get up for the morning, first thing I think about, she'll be up in a minute, she'll, she'll need some coffee. She likes her coffee for the morning, so I make a pot of coffee. I set the cup down there, put, put the, uh, what is it, Splenda in it, put two, uh, put the little milk in it. I've got it sitting there waiting on her. All she's got to do, Brother Doug, is walk over and stick it in the In fact, now, she got where she don't even do that. She just comes in, sits on in the couch, and I bring it to her. 
and she'll sit there and drink that little cup of coffee. Yeah. And my friend, then I, I always go eat breakfast. And when I'm eating breakfast, I'll send back, you need anything? You want me to bring you something to eat? And she'll say yes or no. And then about lunchtime, I'll tell her, I said, I'm going to eat a snack. And I said, you want something? If you had anything to eat? And you need anything? Do you need what? You need to go anywhere today? Yeah. You need to do this. And all the time, Brother Doug, I found myself being mindful of her all the time in my heart and in my life. And I'm not just toot my own horn. That's just what I do. But you know what? I want to be mindful of God. I want Him just to be on my mind all the time. And that's why yesterday was. Only way you can find favor with God. You've got to make yourself, prepare yourself for that. Yes. Amen. You know I mean, you've got to get up in the morning thinking about Him. You know what? These guys separated, denied themselves of a lot of things that, that they might have favor with God. Uh, you know what? We don't want to give up nothing. We don't want to give up no sleep. You ever have God wake you up in the middle of the night? God <laughs> woke me up in the middle of the night here a while back. I got up and, and, and the first thought I had was, you know, God, it's three in the morning. <laughs> I'm just human. And I, and I laid there, you know, and I thought, well, and boy, uh, the Holy Ghost spoke my heart and said, you need to get up. And I, I got up in case said, what are you doing? I said, I said, the Lord just give me a thought. If I don't get up, I'll forget it. And I got up and went in there. Hey, hey, and Brother Jackson, I was in my office at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, there, the boys are riding fast. I could get it, Brother Doug. And I mean, I was about to have a spell. I probably wouldn't have if Kay wasn't snoring in there. And I'd have woke her up. But I felt like just having a spell. You know what? I thought, praise God. I want, I'd rather have, I'd rather have a little, Matches from God has yeah. have an hour of sleep from the Lord. We don't give up no sleep. We don't give up no time for nothing else. We ain't gonna give up anything. <laughs> we ain't gonna give up no TV. We ain't gonna give up no ball playing. We ain't gonna give up nothing to get along somewhere and prepare ourselves to have favor with God. Amen. She prepared herself. It's like it's like over here in the book of Second Timothy. You remember what uh, uh, Paul talked about, my friend, when he talked about we're like a soldier. We're like a soldier, my friend, under the Lord. Uh, he said, he says, my, let me read it to you. Second Timothy. He said, therefore, we endure hardness as good soldier. No man that war entangle himself with the fires of this life, that he may please him or find favor with him who have chosen him to be a soldier. When they prepared us to Vietnam, we didn't get to do nothing. We trained. We trained all day, and sometimes half the night. And when you got through, you were looking. You were looking for a television. You were looking for a bed. Because you know you might have to get up there the next morning. And all day they took everything away from them. They stripped us of everything. When we when we caught, walked in there and they gave us them, them uh, army outfits, hey, they said, you don't need them civilian clothes no more. You can junk them. Hey, and my friend, everybody that we got rid of them. I don't know where they went, but they went somewhere goodwill, I guess. Hey, uh, my friend, but they junked it all out. And all we had was what they provided for us. Hey, and we was on their time. Hey, and we done what they said. Hey, and my friend, we gave up everything. Hey, we didn't even know what was going on uh, out children in society uh, but I'll tell you what we was training uh, and preparing ourselves uh, for a warfare out yonder uh, and my friend when we got to Nam, uh, I'm going to tell you what it's a battle out yonder uh, and you ain't seen nothing yet uh, what's going to take place in the United States uh, you ain't seen anything I don't get on that and I'll never get back uh, but you ain't seen nothing uh, what's going to take place uh, we, we think we had it rough we didn't have it rough right, right. God, the government gave you money didn't none of us lose no weight? <laughs> Come on now. Down home, if you draw, down home, if you got laid off, they added money. They, some of them guys were drawing eight, nine hundred dollars a week, twice as much as they was making. We didn't suffer. <laughs> uh, the whole thing we suffered, we had to put up with our husband or wife uh, on a regular basis, and we weren't used to that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> One had been more divorces and everything. <laughs> but you know what? We didn't really suffer through all this stuff. Amen. We got aggravated, but we didn't really suffer. I'm going to tell you what, it wasn't like the Great Depression. They suffered. They were soup blinds. And there was great things, and people starved and hungry. And ain't none of us starved. We've all been blessed beyond measure, even in the midst of all this. But I'm going to tell you what, my friend, there's coming a day, my friend, soldiers, a good soldier. If you're going to be a good soldier, you've got to forget about what's going on out yonder. And my friend, seek to please him who you're pleasing as a good soldier. And our attention and favor ought to be, we want to be finding favor with God. 
So she prepared herself. I seen a nurse here a while back. I'll give you this and I'll move on. I seen this nurse and she was she she had landed a, a job uh, in in the at the hospital, full time job, full time nurse. She graduated and, and, and I asked her a question. I said I said, Well, uh, are you happy? Are you happy uh, being a nurse? And she said, Oh, I'm happy. It's what I always wanted to be. She said, It took me a long time to get here. <laughs> but I'm here and I'm happy. What she says is I had to go through school, had to go through college, had to do, do all this and stuff. And said it took me a long time to get here. But she said, I'm happy. And I'm going to tell you what, it may take you a while to get there. But if you ever find favor with God, you'll be happy. <laughs> you'll be happy if you ever find favor with Him. It'll be the happiest moment in the day of your life when you know that God is smiling upon you. Yeah. Well, not only that, she, she, she prepared, but she sought only the king's approval. You look at verse number 16, uh, uh, it says, uh, uh, and, and, and Esther, uh, well, let me read verse, verse 15. Now, when, the, when, when the, the turn of Esther came, the Bible said uh, uh, she required nothing but what the, the keeper of the uh, chambers gave her and uh, appointed her. And the last phrase of verse 15, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. You know, she could have stopped right there. She's walking down through there all decked out and all decked out and all that perfume smelling good. You ever pa I passed a woman the other day. She came in the post office. I'm going out and open the door for her. She came in, and I don't know what she took a bath in, but she smelled wonderful. <laughs> I felt like just walking behind her and smelling. Amen. <laughs> I mean, the whole, the whole atmosphere changed. I mean, the whole post office office was smelled up. And, 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 and I was going out, and an old guy come in. He said, what's that smell? I said, it ain't me. Amen. I, I said, she went in before me. I, my friend, but she, she had that smell, that, that aroma about her. You know what? Some people today, my friend, you know, they, they, they get attention of others. She could have stopped and said, whoa, look who I am. <laughs> and she could have gained all that. She could have bathed in the attention. The Bible said all that crowd around her. Can't you imagine? Whoa, who's that? Man, look at her. She's beautiful. Man, she smells good, <laughs> looks good. And she could have basked in all that attention. You know what? I'm afraid there's a lot of preachers that's got that way. <laughs> They're just basking in all the attention of me. Hey Amen. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. If they say you more than they say God in your life, you're in trouble. Hey Amen. I like the fellowship. Now I'm a loner. I've, I've become more of a loner in my old days than I was uh, used to be. But but I, I'm kind of a loner. I go to meetings sometimes. I just go and sit down and flop down. It don't matter to me. But you know what? Some of these guys they they crack me up. Brother Doug, you've seen them. As soon as they get there, they are they're heading right up there. You know, man. <laughs> you ever seen them? Huh? They'll come in and look for the pastor. They'll look for Brother Doug. They will, they will shake your hand. They'll run up there. I'm here. Uh, come on, they'll help me out. They want his attention. Amen. Come on now. They want his attention. They want his favor. And they get wrapped up. Some people like that. They get wrapped up in all the attention that's going on. And I'll tell you what, she wasn't interested in that. She just passed all that up. And you come on down to my friend, to verse number 17. And said, and, she, and the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained a grace and favor in his sight. Things that made her happy. She, when she was prepared, her, th her thoughts wasn't, I will make the crowd happy. I will be successful. I will get another meeting. I will do this. I will do that. Her whole thoughts was, if you'd ask her, what are you doing? I'm preparing for that day that I walk before the king. I want his favor. It don't matter what anybody else says. It don't matter what anybody's opinion is. All I'm interested, I'm doing this to find favor with the king. <laughs> you know what? You ought to study and pray. Separate yourself and live right you can find favor with God. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. You can find favor with the Lord. I remember, I remember years ago, and I've probably told you this. Years ago, down in down in Georgia, there's a guy trying out for. Or the church didn't have a pastor, and they called this fellow to come preach on Sunday morning. And he came and preached and had. A, and I'm not against outlines. I, I've got a halfway one up here, but uh, he had a great outline. He was right down the line. My friend, a great speaker. 
had a great voice uh, and he spoke and preached uh, and my friend what and when they got through speaking everybody said oh man what a preacher what a speaker man uh, had everything just right uh, and there's nothing wrong with that he ought to be right uh, but everything was right they went away saying that evening uh, oh what a preacher and that night they had another guy come an older guy came in he got up and read along the same text they read back and preached and when they left that night they said oh what a savior yeah. oh what a savior yeah. I tell you what if our preaching don't point them to him yeah. something's wrong if our teaching don't point them to him something's wrong if our singing if we leave and they say what a great song if we leave and they say a wonderful message I tell you what we all want to leave and they say oh what a savior oh what a God I tell you what I don't know about you in my old days I want to find favor with God I want God to be seen God to be noticed amen hey listen uh, this, this drives me crazy these glasses I had surgery on my eyes and I can't, if I look out there with, your, with them on I can't see you but if I take them off I can see you but if I put them on I can see this so they're on and off on and off drives Kay crazy but that's okay Amen. She probably turned a lot of heads. <laughs> but that wasn't what she was interested in. I remember years ago, and I've told you this a hundred times, I guess. I preached a meeting in North Carolina, Brother Jackson. <laughs> preached all week, Sister Ned. Nobody moved. Seemed like I struggled every night. Nobody said anything, nothing. I preached all week. And I got that old van. Remember that old van I used to have? Headed up out of Carolina and they kiss this the devil. The devil got in there with me. He said, Well, you wasted your time. <laughs> he said, You've been in there all week. Preached all week. Said you didn't have nobody come to order. Nobody even gave you a compliment. Nothing happened. You could have been home with your family. You've wasted your time. He wore me out for about an hour, Brother Doug. Finally I pulled that old van over off off forty. I pulled that thing apart and I said, Mr. Devil. It's a long way home. I got about eight more hours. And I ain't interested in listening to you all the way to the house. And I quoted him a few verses of scripture. Had a little prayer. Holy Ghost showed up in that van and he's gone, buddy. <laughs> and God came down in that van. Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, Son, now you preached every message. It's exactly what I wanted you to preach. And I said, You hear that devil? God said, I've done what he wanted me to do. I cranked that up and headed down the highway. I was a shouting in the crowd. You know why? I found favor with God. I tell you, I don't care what the devil thinks you think. I want to hear him say, Well done. What I want you to do. Uh, I'm talking about, I want to fire, I want to please him. Yeah. Well, let me move on. I'll leave about half this out. Let me give you this. I went over to the bank the other day. <laughs> went over to the bank because our banks is closed up right now before. I mean, you can go through the drive through. You can't get in there. I like to I like go in and talk. My wife said, she said, you know what the good's about this bank being shut up and you have to go through the drive through? I said, what? She said, you go through the drive through somebody's behind you, and you got to go on. Because when I go in the bank, it's 45 minutes to hour before I can get out. She'll call me. She, if she's there, she'll come. Hey, you coming out? You can't have that much money. Uh, I like to go in there and talk. I go in there and talk to every one of them and, and carry on, and, and, and I miss that. But uh, we went up to the bank for all this happened. We went up to the bank, and Riley was with me. And Riley's been coming around helping me, and, and uh, she worries about me, and, and so she's a, she's a good little heifer. She come over, and brother Doug, we went over to the bank, and they never had met Riley at the bank. Had met Lexi and met uh, one of the other the boys, and and uh, Riley was with me. <laughs> she's in seventh grade. She came in there and whispered. I said, "Well, don't y'all introduce y'all to Riley?" I said, "This is my granddaughter." I said, "She's my buddy." I said, "She's my heifer." I said, "Her name's Riley." You know, Riley, I can see her now. She stuck her head up and she said, I'm the favorite. <laughs> that girl said, you're the favorite. She said, yeah. She said, I'm the favorite. She said, Papa, pick me. I'm the favorite. I don't know about you. I want to be one of God's favorites. <laughs> I want to be one of his. Oh, my. Nah. Well, let me say something else. She not only prepared herself, she not only sought the king's approval, but she discovered her assignment and fulfilled it. 
Look, look in chapter verse chapter four and verse fourteen. Doug mentioned this one ago. You remember that? You remember uh, what happened in chapter three? Haman puts a death decree on the Jews. In chapter four, Mordecai goes up her and he tells Esther, "Here's what's going on. Here's what's happening." And Esther says, "Well, what can I do?" In verse fourteen, he says, "For if thou all the other holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise of the Jews from another. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth where thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this?" Then Esther made them answer, Mordecai this answer, Go, gather all the Jews at the present and you said, and fast ye for me, neither eat and drink three days or three nights. I also and my maids will fast likewise, and I will go into the kings, which is according, not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Hey, she just found, this is my, he said, who knows? Who knows, Esther? You're a Jew. You ain't even supposed to be there. But God may have you there for such a time as this. You don't know who you are and what you're doing. God may have you there for such a time as this. And Esther said, okay. Now, Brother Doug, you notice this. She didn't say, okay, and take off and run before the king. The Bible said, she said, oh, let's fast and pray three days and three nights. You know what? She's preparing herself again. She done prepared herself, went in. She said, that worked last time. <laughs> I think I'll just prepare myself again. And she prepared herself and went in before the king and she said, she said, if I perish, I perish. Amen. If I perish. And she, you know what? She accepted her going. He said, who knows? You may, you may have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And he, she looked and saw the Jews are dying and she saw the, the commandment upon them. And she said, man, this may be the only hope. And she prepared herself and went in. And you know what? She found favor of the king again. When he walked in, he raised his sepulcher. And if you know anything about that, if you wouldn't sent for her, if you wasn't sent for, I don't care if you was his wife, if you wasn't sent for, and you come in his presence and he didn't raise that subject, you was took out, immediately took out and, and destroyed. And she said, I hadn't been sent for. But if I perish, I perish. I'm going to present myself. I'm going to present myself. I'm going to prepare myself and I'm going to present myself for him. And you know what? She prepared herself. I don't know. <laughs> she, may, she may have come in smelling double what she did last time. I don't know. I, believe she, I don't believe she is in her house coat. <laughs> Amen. I believe she is decked out. She prepared herself, fasted, prayed, went in before the king. He raised that supper. And she went in and told the king. In other words, she said, I may die, but I'm going to die. I'm going to die pleading the case of my people. And I'm going to tell you what, when you get to that place, you prepare yourself to the place. I'm, if I die, I die. If I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to go to jail. I thought about when all this Christ is going, I thought, man, where's all them old time preachers? Yeah. Come on, oh, roll off. And some of them guys, they wouldn't have shut the doors. They'd have went to jail before they shut the door. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm just telling you, right? Got a bunch of wimps for pastors now. Amen. Right. Sure. I thought, okay, it's a good thing I wasn't a pastor. I said, they'd put me under the jail. Amen. But I know, I know there's things you have to do. I understand that. I'm not talking about that. But I'm going to tell you, some of them old timers, man, they wouldn't have put up. Bull Brother Roll off went to jail two or three times. Yeah. Amen. Jerry Falwell, a lot of people didn't like what he did, but I'm telling you, he did go, he did go to the court, he did go to the White House and fight for us. And some of our freedom we enjoy still, it's because he went up there and I said had services on the, on the lawn and fought for what we've got. You know, one of our one of our weaknesses today, we don't have a spokesman. Overall, we don't have a Christian spokesman that that churches and people will follow. We don't have that right now. Amen. And so the Bible said she she accept, found her Simon and she fulfilled it. Paul said in Philippians, he said, I've not obtained, but he said, I pressed toward, I pressed, I'm working, I'm looking, I'm preparing myself for whatever God's got. Uh, uh, David, he come around and they said, uh, what are you doing? He said, is there not a cause? Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. Right. David didn't know when he, David didn't know, David didn't know when he got down there. Uh, it's 5 after 12. I'll try to finish in a minute. David didn't know. Y'all ain't been in church in a while, so he will help you. David didn't know when he went down there. Brother Doug, I seen this the day. Bless my heart. When David went down there, all he knew, he'd go, go down there and check on his brother, give him some food, yeah. take some cheese to the captain, he'd read go to house. Yeah. Yeah. He had no clue. He had no clue. He was going to face the dot. But he got down there. Now, you got to back up. He's back on the back side of the desert. Yeah. <laughs> right in Psalm 23, fellowshipping with God. 
ain't seen nobody. <laughs> Just along with God. <laughs> Taking care of some sheep. God right ready for something. Here's a man back on the backside of the world finding favor with God. God brought him out of there and sent him down there. He thought that's all I got to do. When we got down there, he seen what was going on. He said, is there not a cause? And he stepped up and God used him. You know why God used him? You know why he found favor? He was a stripping of the land. It didn't matter. He found favor with God because of what he'd been doing before he got there. And he went down there and fought that job. See, this ain't an instant thing. It ain't an instant thing. Better called on me to preach the other day. I went to, to went to a service and he looked at me and he said, "You preach." <laughs> I had a funeral the other day. Preacher Whitson, you remember Preacher Whitson? His wife died, and she always told me she wanted me to preach her funeral. And uh, and so when I left the church, she said, "You got to come back and preach my funeral." Well, I've been gone four years. And so she died. Brother Whitson called me. And I was talking. And I said, well, I hate it about Sister Joyce. And he said, Brother Mike, I'll get back with you. I said, okay. And, and he called me back. He said, Brother Mike said, said, we got a pastor, Brother Honeycutt. And everything said, if it won't bother you. He said, uh, 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 since we got a pastor. And I said, Brother Whitson, that won't bother me. I said, you just do whatever you want to do. I said, you got a pastor? And I said, I think that's what it ought to be. Well, I, I thought he meant that Brother Honeycutt was going to do the funeral. So when I went to the funeral, I didn't even take a Bible. But he's had a graveside. He can't have funerals. No, no, I just went to, I just went to the graveside. And I walked up there and shook hands with Brother Whitson. And I never met Brother Honeycutt, the one who took my church. I never met him. So I went over there, introduced myself to him. We were standing there talking. Funeral home lady come up there and she said, uh, she said, y'all the preachers? And I said, well, I'm a preacher. And I said, uh, Brother Whitson's free. And I said, this is Brother Honeycutt. He's the pastor. I said, he'd be doing the funeral. Brother Honeycutt looked at me and he said, No, I ain't doing the funeral. You are. I said, No, I'm not doing it. I said, Brother Whitson called me and said he had a pastor now. He said, I didn't even bring a Bible. I said, I ain't got one either. <laughs> he said, Well, uh, I said, Ma'am, I said, See Brother Whitson down there. I said, You go down and ask him what he wants to do. Whatever he wants to do will be fine with us. And while he was going down there, Brother Honeycutt looked at me and he said, Brother Mike, I've just been here a year. I don't really know her. She's been sick for a long time. He said, I visited her twice. He said, you pastored her. He said, you've known her for years, 30 years probably. You pastored her for 19 years. He said, why don't you just go ahead and do the funeral and I'll have a word of prayer. I said, well, that's fine. And the lady come back up there and she looked at me and she said, Brother Whitson said, for you to do whatever you want to do, just keep it short. <laughs> I told that lady, I said, give me just about five minutes to get down there in the truck and get my Bible. I went down the truck, got my Bible, and came back up there, done the service, Brother Doug. And when I walked away, Brother Honeycutt said, he looked at me and he said, he said, you done a good job to be off notice. I said, oh, I wouldn't notice, off notice. I've been doing this 54 years. And I said, I've been studying every day. I wasn't off notice. I said, God should be instant in Satan. I said, I don't know where I, ever where I show up. I just want to find favor with God. Amen. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just telling you, if you study, pray. Amen. Amen. This is like nurse. Dad's been a nurse ever since, uh, ever since uh, the, the world began. Amen. And, and uh, she's been a nurse for years. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I could ask her something. And she, she wouldn't have to say, well, let me run back over to the office. Or let me run over and get a book. Uh, and look this thing up. There's things I've asked her. And she just tell me, you know, what's there? She, she's ready. It's, she's, she, she's full of it. You know what? I'm telling you, when we study and pray, we ought to be so full of God. Right. God will help us to find favor. Amen. God calls on us. Amen. I got to hurry. Listen. Not only that, she gave her all. She said, if I perish, I perish. Huh? And God showed her favor and it saved the nation. Haman was hung. Enemy was defeated. All because she was willing to get to that place. She found favor with God. Hmm. And let me say this, and I'm through. You need to get over this instant stuff. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We talk about the old revivals. I'm going to tell you, if you study these old revivals, there was prayer of months and months ahead of time. People prepared themselves. You know... 
And I got a real burden to see. I, I, I'd like to see one, one more old time revival before I'll be 71 for long. I, I'd like to see another good revival break out before I die. I really would. But you know what? Somebody's going to have to pay the price. Somebody, somebody's going to have to be willing to shut themselves up. Pay the price. Did you know, did you ever think about this? And there's so much in this. When she was out there in them 12 months, she wasn't out in the world. She is shut up with the Lord. We think we got to have the world. We don't have to have the world. We don't have to have them. Amen. It's kind of like cell phones. We think we got to have them, but we don't have to have them. Shoot, I lived for years without them. Amen. Especially these three and four years old. What do they need one for? And you think that's funny, but we got a lady at home. Her kid's four years old. He got, got their own cell phone. I'm thinking, what's a four-year-old need a cell phone? They need toys. Hershey candy bars and stuff like that. That's what they need. But we got to have this. we got to have that. we got to have the best. Everything the world comes up with, we got to have it. We'll work extra. We'll work over. My boy worked over so he'd get him a new phone. He said, I'm work overtime. I said, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to get me another phone. They come up with a new phone, I'm going to get me another. So I said, you go over and work overtime and go over and spend all your money. Your phone works. <laughs> they fuss at me. I've got the same flip phone for, what, 10, 12, 15 years? I guess I had the same old flip phone. It works. I call everybody. Amen. Text everybody. Call everybody. Amen. It works. Cost me th what was it? Two dollars. I think it's two dollars that I paid for that flip phone. <laughs> I'm serious. They got a word they said you can have it for two dollars if you upgrade and go to this two dollars. I said, man, two dollar phone, give it. <laughs> Had ever since. Works. I can call Brother Doug, text Brother Doug, send net text, she sends me back. It works. I'm gonna tell you what. This newfangled stuff ain't working. You say, how do you know it ain't working? Because it ain't changing nobody's life. People come to Alders now and go home. They go out the door. They don't ever change. There's no change in their life. Used to have revival. Used to when people got saved. Used to when God fell into place. People left. Their life changed. I can tell you where it's good or not. I'll give you this. I promise them to. But i tell you how you can tell if it's good. I've heard these preachers say, Oh man, we had war Sunday morning. I'm not saying this because you said that a while ago. I've had them tell you, Sunday morning, it broke out. Man, it broke out. I said, Did? What happened? Man! Everybody was shouting and praising God. People in the altar were had it. Man, it was real. I said, How many did you have Sunday night? Yeah, Come on now. Hey, we had about 30. Yeah. <laughs> it went from 150 to 30. I thought, Man. It must not have broke out too good. Right. It didn't last. Yeah. Right. It didn't last five or six hours to get you back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Amen. I tell you, revival never breaks out. It'll grow. Yeah. It'll be old. Yeah. <laughs> You'll change. Yeah. Amen. Right. Finding favor. I don't know about you. I want to find favor yeah. with God. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.